Uh, we got a 1969 Mustang Mach 1 here. And this here is an aftermarket hood. This is not a factory original hood. Uh, I wish I had the factory original hood because the factory original is much better than the aftermarket hood, but we got to go with what we got. And what I'm doing right now is I'm basically trying to get some of this dust and trash off it because we actually bought this hood a year ago. So this hood's actually a year, a year and a half old and it sat out in my trailer waiting to be used. So there you go. That's the story about the hood. Now, what we're doing is this is a Mach 1. This is a 1969 Mach 1 and the Mach 1s have a scoop in this area here. Now, the scoop that was on the original hood, of course, was junk, so we had to get an aftermarket one. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And what this is about, this is actually about installing the scoop on the car. I'm going to show you how to do that the easy and simple way. And hopefully, you'll be able to do this at home, and uh, it'll be a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am situation of putting your scoop on your 1969 or 70 Mustang Mach 1. Welcome to... DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. want to do before you do anything is you have to locate your carburetor on your hood. You see where my finger is and many can come in here there's a little dimple right here. All right I don't know if you can get down there and see that. Can you see that little dimple? There's a dimple right here. Yeah. Okay so that's a dimple. The way that I made that is we're gonna open the hood and if you look right here there's our dimple. You see what I'm saying? Now what that's doing that is showing me the center of this carburetor and the way that I found that is I had the carburetor air cleaner screw inside the carburetor and it was sticking out longer than it was supposed to and I had the hood it was just enough to where when I closed the hood like this let me show you so I closed the hood down like that and then when I pushed down what happened you dented the hood you indented the hood so that's telling me where our carburetor is that's the first thing you gotta do is locate your carburetor versus your hood we need to get a rag or something to cover our carburetor so we don't get it messed up. Okay, now that we've covered our carburetor, uh, I'm sorry, I'm actually in the middle of painting this car as well. Come on over, let me show you what I'm talking about. So what we're doing is we are painting the inside of the body parts. That way they're already done when we bolt the car together, I only have to paint the outside. So before I take this hood off to paint it, because we're going to paint the bottom of it black, all right, and then I'm going to block sand this down and prime it. And then we'll go ahead and once the bat is painted black, then we will bolt it back onto the car. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. All right. And then it will be ready to paint two-tone black and red. Before we do that, I want to go ahead and install the scoop. Now, this is our aftermarket scoop. This is a company that is very popular in the Mustang era. I do not advertise, but I'm going to tell you something about this company here. You can buy this name brand, or you can buy the other name brand, or the other name brand, or the other name brand, and you know what it is? All the it's same. It's the same fucking thing that comes from the same fucking factory. If it doesn't say Ford authorized fucking part, like the rear spoiler that we're using, this comes from the same fucking factory that the other company came from. There's no difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our aftermarket scoop and see if everything that we ordered came in the package. And I'd like to say that I did buy this on eBay. We did not buy this um, from a supplier. Uh, and you can find all your aftermarket parts on eBay. And I'm going to suggest that to get on eBay to buy all your parts because you're going to get them a lot cheaper than going to these fucking uh, you know, boutique <laughs> stores 
such as Ponies Mustang Place or whatever the fuck the name of the place is, okay, get on eBay and try to find them before you buy them from them. So we're gonna go ahead and get our scoop out of the box if we can. You see what we got there? Look at all them bolts. Look at all them holes we're gonna have to drill out. So we'll take our made in Taiwan box and give it a little heat bubble over there. All right. And then we'll take our Dynacord box and give it a little heat bubble over there. Did you see that? It, yeah. Good. When I install these scoops, many can come over here. Uh, everybody's different on the way they do it. Now this is going to be a non-functional scoop. That's what they did in 69. The only functional scoops were the shaker scoops they had for the 420, I believe it was 426 or 428 Cobra jet engine. Any other engine that was installed in a 69 was this scoop right here. All right. Now before they went to a full bore non-working scoop, all right, what they did, and this is why I mark the center of where my carburetor is to show you because we're not going to do that but I'm going to tell you about it is what they would do is they would cut four half moon you see how I'm doing that many yeah okay they would cut four half moon okay uh circles out just like that I so they would that. do that around the carburetor yeah that was their first design and then um, you see this little rubber thing here uh -huh. okay that would still be there but when they put this on top of it that would give it a semi-functional scoop because it would still drag air underneath this rubber because the rubber um, initially the rubber would not sit all the way flush like it is now all right it would be possibly maybe half of that and then what they would have is that scoop would be over them holes and then it would suck air down into not the carburetor, but the air cleaner itself, letting the carburetor breathe better. And then um, toward the end of 69 and uh, all the way through 70, they basically just did away with this situation here, all right? And they didn't cut these holes out that I just marked on here, all right? And then they just had the hood with the scoop itself. Now, other things that you might notice when you put your scoop on, a lot of people will put their scoop, this is one mini needs to come over here, all right, a lot of people will put their scoops, depending on how they like it or what have you or who's doing it, they'll have about an inch ga a gap between the scoop and the back of the hood. All right, the original way that they did them from the factory is this was approximately a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch away from the edge. That's how they did it. Or they would be flush mounted right up next to this end. But more than likely, it would be approximately a, 15, a 16th to an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the hood and there'd just be a little bit showing. Sometimes you'll see them where there's about an inch right there and sometimes you'll see them where they're like that. A lot of people when they install these scoops, what they do is they look at this opening right here. Okay, do you see that opening right there? See the edges of that? Yeah. And then what they'll do is they will line that up, okay, to where they think that looks like it actually, you know, ends up on the edge of this okay the factory correct way that they that these will be installed is with about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch away from the lip so if we look right here i got my makeshift table set up and i also got my paper machine um, a lot of you already know what's going on here but i'm going to keep on going as we talk i'm going to go ahead and take my paper all right i'm going to go ahead and tape it down right here Okay, do you see what I'm doing there, Minnie? Yeah. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my taper again. I'm gonna go ahead and move my scoop. Will that work? Oh, we only need one piece of paper. Look at that. Okay. Well, what I'm gonna do, we didn't need two pieces of paper. We didn't need two pieces of paper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paper and I am going to start popping the holes in this. Do you see what I'm doing here, Minnie? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna pop these holes all the way on this side. Once I do that, okay, once I got my holes popped, we can go ahead and remove that tape. We'll flip it over like this, and then we'll kind of stretch it out and pop all the other holes out in it. Do you understand what I'm doing here? Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It looks like you're making a pattern. 
think that might be a template, maybe, just maybe. I think there was one right here. Okay. okay, now that I got that, I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna rub it around the edge. I'm just gonna take it like that and I'm gonna rub it. Do you see what I'm doing here, Manny? I see that. Now, another way that you can do this, okay, we can't rub that, so I'm gonna flip it back over with my holes cut in it, just like that. Let me get this paper out. All right, I'm gonna take my magic marker, and as I'm running my hand, I am going to go ahead, see how I'm rubbing my hand around the edge of it? I'm rubbing my hand and using the marker at the same time. See how I'm doing that? This doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but it does have to be really close. And then, once we got our pattern drawn out there, what's the next thing you think we're gonna do, Minnie? We're gonna lay it on the car and... We are? Well, we're gonna cut it out and then we're gonna lay it on the car and do it. Okay, so then, now if you look right there, what do we have? We have almost an exact replica of what's going on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna cut it out right here on the inside of the black line. See how I'm doing that, Minnie? Yep. Okay, I don't um, really care about being uh, flawlessly perfect as long as we can get a nice good cut out of it. Now, the one area that you wanna make sure that is properly square as much as possible is this end here, which would be this end here. Do you know why? Because that's the end you're gonna line there up with. There you go, that's the hood. end that you're gonna line up with the hood. And how far did I say I was gonna come back? 316, there you go. give or take. Give or take. And then, once I cut that out, what do we got? Got your pattern. We got a nice pattern. Now, I'm going to let you know something, and this is a little bit ridiculous. This is for the lazy ass that doesn't want to do anything in life. Um, you can actually get online and buy a pattern already made. You can do that if you want to wait three or four days for it to come in the mail. It's going to cost you about $17 or $18. I just made that for free with a piece of paper off my paper machine, an X-Acto knife, and my hands by popping the holes in, and look what I got. Mm -hmm. And okay. you can use like newspaper, you can use whatever kind of paper construction you want. paper, Anything. or whatever. Exactly. While we're standing here in the paint booth area, let's go see how our parts are looking because what were we doing a little while ago? Cutting it. Cutting them all in. Let's see what we got. Now, of course, we haven't put the clear coat on yet, but we did got the base coat. And you can see that it's looking beautiful. I'm letting this dry so I can put my two full wet coats of clear. That's all that's required on door jams is two full wet coats. We got uh, three full wet coats of paint. We're gonna have two full wet coats of clear and it's gonna be done. This is a situation I was talking about is getting inside this edge right here. This is another important tech tip for all you guys that are building these old classic muscle cars. These are called um, tail light or fender extensions. If you paint these separate off the car and you paint the car, what's gonna happen is when you bolt these on there, what happens, Manny? Chip the paint off. It doesn't chip the paint. Oh. It smashes the paint together and then you got this like wrinkly area right there where the paint was pushed on. It's much better to do this right here, all right, paint all the edges, then bolt these on there and then paint it. There you go. So we're going to take our pattern and we're going to get it lined up. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm eyeballing it. Eyeballing the front okay. with the body lines. Right. So I'm going to come over here and eyeball that because that's all it takes with this a little good eyeball. And I'm gonna say that's about right from that line to that line. And then I'm gonna look back here. And like I said, I'm gonna go between an eighth of an inch and three sixteenths. And that actually looks pretty good. That's like a quarter. We're gonna bring it up just a little bit. Approximately right there. Okay, that looks pretty good. As I'm looking at it, I wanna make sure that this line's looking straight. So if we look at it over here, one more time to line the front up. I'm gonna wet my finger. You see how I did that? And that's gonna help me move this. Just like that. Now, another thing that you can do, all right, another way that you can get this centered up, instead of eyeballing it like my friend Pete is, you can come over here. Are you watching this? You can take the piece of paper that you just cut out, and what am I doing? You're gonna find the center. I'm gonna find the center by folding it over, okay? You can fold that over there, just like that. Line everything up, and you can also see that all the holes align up as well. 
all right because this is a mirror image let me tell you about working on a car everything on the right side is exactly the same as the left side and vice versa 99 percent of everything that's on this car is a mirror image from side to side as you can see right here the holes on this are a mirror image watch see there watch this see you see what i'm saying here there you go okay so now <laughs> what we've done is we found the center and we can actually go like this all right set that down there because now we got our center on and there's a ridge right here do you see that ridge i see it okay and then the only thing we have to do we can this center goes all the way up okay is line that center up just like that and then get our three sixteenths or whatever we're going to do all right and then guess what we're ready to go ahead and mark our holes the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start drilling our holes now we're going to ask ourselves what size drill bit should we use my friend pete okay what you want to do is you want to use a drill bit that's bigger than what you have and the reason for that is is why bigger than the nut or the stud so it goes off and on easier so it'll go off and on easier and also using a bigger uh, a bigger drill bit is going to let you move the drill back and forth kind of shimmy it around to make sure that it's centered up properly the way you want it so you have a little bit of adjustment so there'll be a little bit of adjustment so let's go see what size studs we got and what size drill bit we're going to need to go ahead and drill inside this hood now you could get accurate and go ahead and get a drill sizer and see actually what size stud you got. We're gonna go ahead and get bigger. So that's telling us that that is what? What size is that right there? I don't know, I can't Okay, see it's one size down from a quarter inch. Do you see what I'm saying? If you look, see how it's getting bigger here? Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna go to this size right there. All right, what is that, 930 seconds? I can't see it from here. Okay, what about that one there? What's that? That's a 1964. Okay, let's go to a 5 16 Let's say that we go 5 16 on that. That seems awful big. Okay, this is how you're going to tell if it's big. You ready? So we go to our 5 16 hole, and then we got our nut that goes over the hole. Is that going to cover it? Yes, that is. That's just the right size drill hole that we want. We want a 5 16 hole for our studs. Okay, where was it at? Right there. That's going to give us enough play, okay, versus if we just drew a quarter inch or actually the right size, that ain't going to do shit. And the nut is going to be able to lock on there and still work properly. Now, if this scoop is set up as a factory OM style scoop, we should not hit any of the inner structure and it should be a spot where the factory scoop was going to go on. So let's find out and see. We want to be very careful using our drill. We don't want to push down real hard because that will cause what? Dent. It'll be a dent there. Okay. I think that's it right there okay like I said I don't want to take the uh, screws off but now you can see what's going on um, if you look right here let me get the flashlight you can see it lines up pretty nice with the edge okay mm -hmm. and everything looks perpendicularly straight so what's the conclusion the center of the grills in the center of the thing there you go oh, it looks right. good. okay What's the conclusion to installing one of these? It's... Okay, that one ain't lining up again. Hold on, let me... Give me my ear. I'm gonna make that one a little bit bigger. You can actually go 3 eighths. You can go ahead and drill a 3 eighths hole and it would be all right because the way that the bolts are set way back in. Um, I don't suggest that, I suggest to do it this way. All right. Okay, now let's try it. Yeah, remember people, no one's going to see those holes. And we also have washers, so. Okay, I think that's it. Excellent. There it is. Nice, tight, snug fit. Everything looks like it's going to go down. And there is our scoop for our 1969. Mustang Mach 1.
Okay, now I got a question for you. What's that? Why did they have turn signals right there? Where was that? So you know you left That's your turn indicators. signal on. That's the indicators. Oh, so you know you left. They your... got them on the inside of the dash and on the outside. Oh, that way you know you're driving down the road and your. I guess, yeah, baby. Flashers flashing yeah, and you don't like know. That. Yeah, sure. Okay. It's, that's just, kind it's, of it's what you call something cool daddy option from the factory. Mike, okay. It's kind of weird. Anyway, that's it right there. There's the way that you do your scoop. The problems we ran into is when you make your homemade pattern, if many can body shop so can give that to me, please. We'll go over that real quick. All right, when we made our pattern, we went ahead and um, took our finger and popped our holes onto the bolt. You see what I'm saying? And what that did, that created a bigger hole which would not properly give us the center that we needed. Um, it does give you uh, 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 a nice location of where it should be located. We also went ahead and folded our pattern in half. That's a very good idea why, Minnie. So you can get the center. It shows the center. So when you look at it professionally, you will see that the center of the grill is lined up with the center of the hood. All right, we also found out that by making your own pattern, sometimes you gotta wobble your holes out and make them bigger. Don't be uh, fretted or worried with that. That ain't gonna cause no problems. Um, they have washers that they make for it uh, at your local hardware store that will cover up any blemishes or imperfections that you might run into. We also found out that the early model 69s um, had the four uh, cutaways here, the pie cuts, that actually let air into the air cleaner. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep it like that. And we also found out one more thing, that there were turn signals inside the scoop in 69. And that is an optional thing. If you want to put them in, you can. If you don't, you really don't have to. We won't be doing that. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you an extensive bullshit video of a scoop that we purchased from Tai Wang. And I showed you how to uh, install it onto the hood that was purchased from Tai Wang. And it'll all look like it's from Tai Wang when we're done. <laughs> But the only difference is my friend Pete's doing it, so it should look really fucking nice. We'll see you later. Take it easy. 1969-70 Mustang Mach 1 scoop ready for installation. Okay, you can turn it off. school. Classes don't stop till you know everything.